The Midwestern United States is still reeling after a cluster of tornadoes killed and injured several people in Iowa Tuesday. The powerful storm system has devastated the community of Greenfield. A small town of about 2,000 people is 55 miles southwest of the capital, Des Moines. As you can see here, a tornado destroyed homes and businesses, overturned cars, and even ripped the bark off of trees. Governor Kim Reynolds called the scene horrific. At least 18 tornadoes were reported in Iowa alone on Tuesday. More severe storms are expected this week from the south to the northeastern U.S. CBS News senior weather producer David Parkinson joins me for more. David, is this type of tornadic, and is that how you pronounce it, activity typical for this time of year? Time of year? Yeah, what? It is actually a little bit. This The end of May is actually one of the times when we see the most violent tornadic activity, and that's really what we saw there. The official determination from the National Weather Service is it's at least an EF3. I would bet a good amount of money that they will upgrade this to an EF4 when they finish doing the survey. They're still out doing it. Uh, but one of the interesting things is the last 10, 11 days of May is actually the time of year where more than a sixth of all of the EF5s we've ever had in the U.S. have taken place. So it's really that late in May season where the air masses are clashing and we have all of the ingredients uh, to have a volatile atmosphere and a really destructive pattern. Uh, and that's some of what we saw in Greenfield. I don't think it was an EF5, but we certainly saw winds that, that when you take a look at the damage, the cinder block buildings, the yeah. really well-built construction that was just flattened, that to me says EF3, EF4 winds, uh, you know, close Closing in on 200 miles an hour, probably. So we're so this is so this is typical. Even though the the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration says there have been more than 300 reports of tornadoes so far this year, is that is that atypical? That number so far in this year. So what is atypical is the relentlessness of the tornadoes. So I went back and I checked the stats, and it actually goes back into April to have a single day that we have not had a severe weather report anywhere in the United States. In fact, let me actually go back and, and pull this exact date here for you. The 24th of April, that is the last day we didn't have any severe weather in the U.S. That's very unusual. Usually we'll have a day or two break, but the atmosphere has just been charged up and it's been all over the country. It's been in the Northeast, it's been in the South, it's been in the Plains. And so that also is unique because usually this time of year, it's the Plains that get absolutely targeted, but we've seen these storms roll all the way across and that has been something that's been uh, unique the other thing that we have seen, which is interesting, John, is if you take a look at the trend line over the past several years, we have seen more severe weather. Uh, but that is not to say, you know, that's over the past 10 years, 2019, still the high water mark. Uh, but realistically, uh, whenever you have an atmosphere that is warmer, it's going to be more volatile. There's going to be more energy in it. And that may be manifesting itself in severe weather. We can't in any way uh, call one tornado mm. something that's attached to climate change, but we can say the pattern of which things are increasing and getting stronger, uh, that likely is related to a warming world. So if it's a warming world, can I, at a left field, ask you a question whether this warming wheel, world and this volatility had anything to do with or should be in our mind when we think of that um, plane that was heading to Singapore from London uh, or London to Bank landed to Singapore that had to land in Bangkok? Yeah, so a couple of interesting things about that one. The first one is, uh, in terms of the climate change connection to turbulence, we talked about that back on primetime a couple months ago, uh, that is something that is typically happening over the United States, over the North Atlantic, because uh, that's uh, the jet stream essentially doing that. Where this turbulence occurred, it was about 10, 15 degrees latitude. Uh, that's not a jet stream one. That's likely uh, some sort of severe weather or at least thunderstorm that the plane was flying through. But here's a fascinating thing, John. We have radar signatures that say the tornado in Greenfield had debris go up to 40,000 feet. And we actually saw reports of, of debris landing 50, 60 miles away from the tornado. What's interesting about that is that shows you the debris went up to plain level from this storm. That's how violent it was. And so that's one of those things where you can't fly uh, around that or over. You'd have to fly around that. You can't fly through it because you've got a, a storm that is th uh, that strong in nature. Uh, we're going to be seeing more severe weather coming up over the next couple of days. But realistically, um, this was a really, really strong storm. And what you saw likely in Southeast Asia was one, too. Wow. Thank you, David. David Parkinson.